Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be building real-time application with Action Mailbox and Hotwire, which is um, the example that I talked about in my RailsConf 2021 talk. So we're gonna build a customer support application with Hotwire so we can have conversations and messages show up in real time. And we're gonna be using Action Mailbox to receive inbound emails for those conversations. So when you write a response to someone, it will send out an email and they'll be able to reply by email to um, continue the conversation. That will get processed by Rails and inserted into the correct conversation. And we'll go talk about email headers for threading those conversations in the right email thread in your e email client, like hey, Gmail, Outlook, whatever you're using, it should thread all of those together because we're gonna be referencing those with our email headers. Now there's a lot to talk about, so let's start off by building our Rails applications basics, which is our models. So I've got a brand new Rails 6.1 app um, installed, uh, and there's nothing to this, just the basic application. So I just ran Rails new customer support, and we're gonna be going and adding Hotwire in. So first thing we need to do is um, add Hotwire ra Rails to our gem file and then run Rails Hotwire install. So what we're gonna do is run bundle add Hotwire Rails. That will add the gem to our gem file and install it. And once that's done, we'll run the Rails Hotwire install command. And you'll notice here there's several different steps that this takes where it installs Turbo, but it will also remove Turbo links so that um, they don't conflict because they're not compatible. Turbo is a replacement for Turbo Links. And then we'll also enable Redis and switch development cable to use Redis as well. So it does quite a few configuration changes to make sure that you're all ready to go. And that's all there is to installing Hotwire, so that's great. And we can move on to our next steps. Now we need to build a few models for our application um, and we also need to install a few things. So let's run Rails Action or Active Storage colon install. We're gonna need that for storing our attachments um, from our emails. And we'll have Rails Action text colon install to install that for storing the contents of the emails um, and the text and bold and everything like that that we would want. And then we'll also run Rails action mailbox install so that we can have the models for processing those inbound emails. So once those are done, we can run Rails DB migrate, um, not migrates, and that will create those models and tables for us. And then last but not least, we're gonna need to add, um, say, device in here so that we have a user model so we can log in. So we'll run bundle add device and then we'll run rails generate device colon install, and then rails generate device user, and we'll give our users either a name string or first and last name. Um, we'll do a name string here, and then we need to start setting up our uh, other models. So let's generate a scaffold for a model called contact, which will be kind of like our customers that we are uh, conversing with these are not the employees, so they'll be users um, for the employees that are on our team. And then the contacts are the ones that are our customers that we're talking to. And so contacts will just have a name and email. You might want some other metadata on there to keep um, track of those, but that is really it. And then we can generate a scaffold for a conversation, which is going to have a subject, uh, belongs to a contact, uh, contact belongs to, so we know who we're talking to, and then um, we will build a post model um, in order to associate each individual message with a conversation. So we'll have Rails generate model this time for the post. The post will uh, have a conversation belongs to, and an author belongs to polymorphic, so that um, this can either be a user or a contact. So you could create a message sent to someone, but when they reply to that, it will be a different author. Um, so it would be a contact in that case instead of a user. So that's why we'll do that as polymorphic. And then we'll have 
the message ID here, which is actually going to be the email message ID. And that's how we're gonna keep track of the email threads. And then um, this is gonna have a body which is rich text from action text. And that's not gonna create a column, but it will create the association for our rich text body um, with action text. And I believe that is all the models that we really need to get um, going here. And we can start by playing around with this in the Rails server and make sure that everything is wired up and that we can set up Hotwire to actually show those new conversations in real time when they are created, as well as the posts when they're created. So let's go and uh, take a look at our scaffolds here. So what we really want to look at is our conversations view. Um, we're gonna need to run our migrations for those new models. But once that's done, um, the conversations view is really where we're gonna be spending a lot of our time. So we're gonna be uh, creating new conversations or viewing them on the index page. And then when we go and look at a conversation, we want to be able to see those messages appended in real time at the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll um, change this contact over to a select so that we can contact select one of our contacts that we wanna to talk to. So we're gonna need some changes to that, but let's go through our models and make sure that our conversation has many posts and that our post belongs to a polymorphic and it does and all of that is good. Um, we can add has many posts to our contact as author, and we can do the same thing for our user as well. And that is good. And then this can also be has many conversations because the contact is on the conversation. So uh, that's the recipient of the conversation or the initial one at least, and we can look through that. And then we can also have um, multiple contacts in the same conversation through posts. And so we can add another association later on if we want to uh, basically look for any conversation where you've been mentioned in one of the posts. But we don't need that right now, so let's move on from there. So let's go into the contacts view and we'll create a new contact and this will be Bob the Builder bob at example.com. We'll create that contact and now we want to be able to create a conversation with Bob. So we'll need to go into the conversation form, html.erb and change this text field to a collection select. And this will be contact.all. We'll take the ID for that contact and then we will use their name um, in that view, uh, or is the label there. So we can have hello world with Bob the Builder, create that conversation, and there we go. So we can go to the show conversation, and if we wanna to link to the contact, we'll say dot name, link to the contact themselves. So we can jump between those now. Um, and that's good, but now we need to go to our conversations index and start um, adding some stuff here for Hotwire to broadcast into this view. Now, in our index here, the conversations index is a table and we have table rows for each one of these and generally that's gonna be a little bit trickier to use um, because, because tables are actually very strict about the sub elements that you have inside of them. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say render at conversations and we will render a, a series of partials for each conversation because that partial is also going to be what we use to render from Hotwire. So let's go into our views, app control, or app views conversations. We will have a uh, similar to this conversation.json.jbuilder, we'll have a conversation.html.erb. Inside of here, we're going to have a div tag, but we're gonna use the tag.div with the ID of DOM ID for the conversation. 
That way we can reference this when we are deleting that conversation so we can remove that from the view. And then we can have our um, content here. So, you know, let's maybe do an H4. Conversation.subject is what we want to display here. We will have a link to the conversation there and that should be um, really all we need for the very basics. Now we can go into our conversation model and we can add our belongs to uh, our broadcasts to for Hotwire. And instead of doing some sort of symbol here for the association that we want to render against, we actually want to pass in a lambda. And we're gonna give that a string that has the return value, which will be the value that we render um, and send stuff across with action cable. So then we can say inserts by prepend because we want these to show up at the top of the list. And then we'll go into the target option, which will be conversation as well, conversations. So that will say, look for the ID of conversations on the page. And we're gonna be using that same string on action cable for this first argument. So then if we go into our index.html.erb, we can say div ID of conversations to match the uh, target that we listed in the model. So it's gonna be looking for this ID when it goes to prepend inside of here. It will render out the two partial path, which is conversations, conversation, partial, and then it will insert that into the index. But all of our action cable connections are created client side. So we actually need a turbo stream from conversations here in order for action cable on the browser to go say, hey, let's go stream from that on Redis. And then Redis will know from the client side that we have a listener. And then when we create a conversation, it will broadcast to that same channel and then go across to our client. So this is the magic line that's going to set up your WebSocket connection here. And if you ever wanna poke around at this, go into your network tab, click on the cable request, and this is that subscribe line. You'll see the sign stream name, which is a sign global ID, I believe, and that will be sent over the Turbo Streams channel and set up that connection. And we can go into our terminal and run conversation dot create name or subject we called it um we'll call this one testing and we will have the contact set to contact dot last and broadcasting that will create it in the database then render that partial and stream it with a background job action broadcast job and that will uh, send it over to the client. You'll see that it got inserted right here. So all of that is working and working in real time. And we have those conversations being displayed automatically. We'll probably want to go and change the sorting so that it stays consistent and doesn't drop down at the bottom when you refresh. But that's an easy one to take care of. And now we can go into the conversations themselves and add our posts and have those show up in real time as well. So we're gonna have a very similar setup inside of our conversation show.html.erb. I'm gonna paste this down here at the bottom and instead of streaming from a string, we're gonna string, stream from a variable this time, so at conversation. So this way we only get the posts for this conversation itself. And then we'll have an ID of posts and we'll render out the posts inside of here. So this is going to be where those are rendered and they'll only come through that conversation. So um, the next piece is that we can go through and update the post model and add the view for that. Um, we're gonna go into post.rb and we'll do the same broadcasts too, but we'll say conversation is a symbol which matches our belongs to which also matches our turbo stream from. And then we can say um, the target is uh, posts in this case. And I believe we don't even need that. That's optional, I believe. Let's test it out real fast. Um, and that will go and set up our conversation posts section. 
So let's go through and set up, you'll notice that we don't have the post variable um, yet. So let's go into our conversation controller and we can uh, go into the show action and say at posts equals at conversation dot posts. And we will go and add the uh, view for that. So we'll say app views posts post.html.erb. And really, um, this is just going to display, it will be first off a div with the ID of DOM ID for the post. Uh, we'll have an end to close that, and we'll have a div with the post author name, and post author email to display those, and we'll have post.body that we render out, which will be the action text rich text body, and that will display that. So we should now have no errors here, and if we go to our terminal, we can say uh, conversation.last.post.create. This will be author is contact dot last and body is hello and we'll create that and it should go and set that post in the database and then broadcast it as well um, but you'll see that we didn't get it displayed over here on the left side and that we can inspect um, the turbo stream action prepend targeted posts so that was correct we are fine with that and this is sending over the target correctly so we just need to make sure that our broadcasting to here uh, matches correctly. So when we said um, conversation.last, we actually need to be viewing that testing conversation here. So here's the Bob the Builder post that we just created. If we create a second one, it will show up in this thread. So we have to be a little bit careful to make sure that we're looking at the right thing and our broadcasting to IDs match what we're streaming from in our views. So this is an easy one that you can uh, run into, but there you go. We were able to create another post and it gets appended to the bottom automatically. And so our post model .rb is a very, very simple broadcast to in this case because we don't need to customize anything for that. The target by default will be the plural model name, so posts, um, all lowercase, and that is the default target name. So that looks good. We'll need to clean up our post template a little bit, but we do have a functional uh, hotwire set up with all of this. So now when we send out emails and we receive inbound emails, we can have those automatically appended and prepended in conversations and so on. Um, all of that will be working automatically out of the box when we implement that next step. So that's it for this episode. We're just setting up hotwire and our basic modeling. But next episode, we're going to go through and start getting into the email portion of this. So I'm looking forward to that, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.